today we're going to be talking about solving systems of equations. So a system of equations is when you have two or more equations that have the same variable. So to solve these, what you need to do is find the ordered pair, so an x comma y, that works for both equations and satisfy both of them even true. So one way to do it is by solving using a table. So if I look at my first equation, 3x plus 2y equals negative 2, what I need to do is solve it for y, putting it in slope intercept form. So I subtract 3x from both sides, okay, and I get 2y is equal to negative 3x minus 2, then divide everything by 2, and I would get y equals negative 3fx minus 1. I'm going to call this one y1 because in my next equation I have a different um, amount. So I take this one right here, I add 4x to both sides, and I get 5y is equal to 4x minus 28, divide by 5, divide by 5, and so I get y2 is going to be equal to 4 fifths x minus, and then 28 fifths would be 5.3. Okay? So if I have both of these equations, y1 and y2, what I can do is make a table of values. So if I have an x, I have a y1, I have a y2. Okay? So I'm going to put the same value of x into both equations and figure out what I get. So let's start with zero. There's an easy one to put in. Okay, so I put it into the first equation right here. So negative three half times zero is zero, minus one is negative one. So go to the next one, y2. Zero times four fifths is zero, minus five point three is negative five point three. So are those two the same? They are not. Let's put one into both equations. Okay, y1, negative three halves times one is negative three halves, minus one is negative. 2.5. If I put it in the next one, 4 fifths times 1 is 4 fifths, or 0.8 minus 5.3 is going to be a negative 4.8. Are those two the same? They are not. So let's go to the next one. Let's try a 2. Well, negative 3 halves times 2 is negative 3, minus 1 is negative 4. Okay, let's go to y2. 4 fifths times 2 is 8 fifths, minus uh, 5.3, put that in my calculator, and I get negative 4. So you'll see that both y's are the same value when we put 2 in for x. So the one point that satisfies would be the answer 2, negative 4. And I can put both of those 2 into both equations, and I get negative 4 for both of them. Okay? So making a table is probably the least effective way of solving systems of equations, but it does work. And one way you can do it is by putting in your calculator. You go to y equals, and you put both equations in. Then you go to your table, hit second and graph, and look to see which value of x is the same for both y's. Here's a couple guided practice problems on the bottom that you can try as well. Another way to do it is to solve using graphing. Okay? So what I can do here is I can solve by putting them into slope-intercept form again. So if I subtracted 2x from both sides, Okay, I get negative y is equal to negative 2x minus 1, divided by negative 1, divided by negative 1, divided by negative 1, and I get y is equal to 2x plus 1. So go over here to graph it. So it crosses at the y-intercept of 1, and my slope is 2. So I go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, down to the back one. Okay. There's my red line right there. Okay. Now, I go to my second graph, and I solve it again for y. So I got 5x on both sides, and I get 2y is equal to negative 5x minus 15, divided by 2, divided by 2, divided by 2. y is equal to negative 5 halves x minus 8. So where does this one cross the x axis, or the y axis? Is that negative 8? Right there. Okay, and my slope is negative 5 halves. So I could go down 5 over 2, but that's not even on the graph anymore. So I'll go up 5, 2, right there. Okay, and you'll see my line cross at this point right there. 
Well, what is that point? That would be the point negative 2, negative 3. So the solution to this system of equations is negative 2, negative 3. Again, this is super easy on your calculator. You go to y equals, you set them both into slope intercept form, put it into your calculator and graph them, and then if you hit the trace button, it'll go right to where the two points meet. Here's a couple guided practice problems. I would suggest trying them on your calculator now. Now, there's a couple different things that can happen when you have systems. Okay? The important words are consistent or inconsistent. So consistent systems has at least one solution. Inconsistent has no solution. Okay? Then, if it has exactly one, it's called independence by itself, independent. Or if it has a finite number or an infinite number, it's called dependent. Okay, so the important words are consistent, which would be having a solution, or inconsistent, which has no solution. Then there's, if it's consistent, it would either be independent, meaning one solution, or dependent, having an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so the easiest way to do that is to graph these. Okay, so if I graph the first one, 4x plus 3y equals 24, put it into slope-intercept form. Okay, so subtract 4x from both sides, I get 3y is equal to negative 4x plus 24. Okay, divide by 3 and I get y is equal to negative 4 thirds x plus 8. Okay, so negative 4 thirds is equal to 4. Okay. That's my first one. And then I go to the next one. I'd add 3x to both sides and I get 5y is equal to 3x plus 30. Divide by 5, y equals 3 fifths x plus 6. So it starts at 6. Okay, and then my slope is 3 fifths. And you'll see when I graph those, those two points or lines meet at one point. Okay? So they meet only at one point, which means it is consistent because it has a solution. And it's independent because it has one solution. Okay? So this one is consistent, independent. Okay? Now the next one, letter B. Let's graph this out. Okay? So. Um, if I add 2x to both sides, I get 5y is equal to 2x plus 10. Divide by 5. y is equal to 2 fifths x plus 2. Okay, so it starts at 2. Slope is 2 fifths, so up 2 over 5. Okay, put that one right there. Okay, go to the next one. Subtract 4x from both sides, you get negative 10y is equal to negative 4x minus 20. Divide by negative 10, and you get y is equal to, well, negative 4 fifths divided by negative 10 is equal to 2 fifths x minus plus 2, minus the negative, so it's 2 plus, okay, so plus 2, and my slope is 2 fifths. So what happens is I graph right on top of each other. So that means that those lines are the exact same. And if they're the exact same, there's an infinite number of points at which they meet. So this one is going to be consistent, dependent, because there's an infinite number of points. Okay? And you might already figure this out, but an inconsistent one would be two parallel lines. They go on forever but never touch. So there's no solution. Okay, here's a couple examples that you can try as well. So, again, this is what our lines are going to look like. If our two lines cross, that means that there's one solution, so consistent, independent. If you have two lines right on top of each other, that's consistent, dependent, because there's an infinite number of solutions. And then finally, inconsistent lines are parallel ones, which have no solution. Now, in my opinion, the easiest way to solve these is by using substitution or elimination. And that's what we're going to be talking about next. So the substitution method is when you solve for one and substitute into the second. So here's an example. It says Alejandro has a 
computer support business. He estimates that the cost to run his business can be represented by this equation right here, y equals 48x plus 500, where x is the number of customers. He also estimates that his income can be represented by y equals 65x minus 145. How many customers must he have to break even? What will be his profit after 60 customers? So you'll notice that both of them are equal to y. So if they're both equal to the same thing, it means they're equal to each other. That's going to be his break-even point when they're equal to each other. So I write my equation like this. 48x plus 500 is equal to, we just want his profit to be the same, 65x minus 145. Now this is a straight algebra problem. We get all the x's on one side, so we subtract 48x from both sides. Okay, and I'm left with 500 is equal to 17x minus 145. Okay, add 45 to both sides. And I get 